There's a big fight sequence uh, in the movie. Sigourney kind of decides that uh, <laughs> she's had enough with all these people interrogating her and a bunch of people come in to take her away and she, you know, does a nice job of cleaning their clocks. And uh, in the beginning, she's playing a little basketball. And I really envision the scene as that basically she's gotten out of jail, she's playing basketball, it's the only fun she's had since she was reborn, as it were. And these guys come in and try to mess up her game. So I tried to use the basketball as a weapon and keep playing. Um, you know, because I didn't want to be like, you know, I hate you guys, I'm not like you. I wanted to be like, you know, just let me play. And on the first version that Jean-Pierre wrote, uh, the, the, the set was supposed to be a huge set and to, to, to show that uh, Sigourney has some real power. So the distance between her and, 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 the, and the basket net was supposed to be huge. So I studied with Nigel Miguel for two weeks quite intensively, you know, I'd, every chance I got. <laughs> and at night we used to go over to UCLA and um, we worked on a bunch of things. But the reality on the set was the distance was not that huge. So any good, you know, a basketball player would be able to throw it nicely. Uh, and then, so what we decided, uh, the idea was, okay, you will drop the, uh, the ball on your back without looking, and then the ball will go straight in the, uh, in the basket. We worked on this shot he wanted me to do over my shoulder as I walked away, which was, was my idea to do this shot that no one could do really, you know, like, and I did want to do it. I mean, I really trained hard. My average was about, you know, one out of six. But lo and behold, on the day when I have to do it, I had to go much further away from the basket than we'd ever practiced. She was almost a good 20 feet away from the basket. And of course, we had lined up a shot where she was in the foreground and the basket was in the background. Well, I don't care if you're Michael Jordan, you know, that is a shot that is probably going to take you hours to make. I was, oh my God, we are going to make 200 takes because she wants to do herself, you know. Now we had planned on getting people in condors and dropping balls, you know, throw it out of the frame, Sigourney, so that somebody can catch it and then throw the ball in or, you know, trying to, through visual effects. And we're thinking, this is going to be a pretty costly shot. And we were running against the clock and, you know, and they wanted to get it in one shot. They didn't want a special effects. I talked a lot with her, please, uh, we can use a machine because it will be too tough for you. They told me not to get it in because they built this machine to get it in, you know, and I, you know, I would have, I should use a different angle to match the machine, all this stuff. And she didn't want because she wanted to do herself. And then, of course, she never did it on, on, on rehearsal. And so the plan was, of course, to CG the ball and to have a perfect, you know, path. And she had just to do the gesture for the beginning of the, of the shot. So I was a little discouraged and Nigel kept saying, do your shot, do your shot, I know you can do it, you know, don't give up. The last person that, <clears throat> that speaks to her after she kicks the shit out of everybody and, and, and says, the hell are you? What are you is me. So she actually walks past me so the shot is me, Sigourney, walking. And I was looking at, at Sigourney, and I, in, in my head, I said, hey, what, 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 what's happening? I saw something, you know, magic, or some, because she, she's magic anyway, something magic in her eyes. She's about six feet past the three-point line, and she just does this. I wasn't even thinking get it in, because I was so sort of demoralized this way. And... You know, nothing but net, just swish. The, the ball didn't touch the basket. Perfect shot. For anybody out there who doubts and who thinks that the movie is nothing but tricks, take a look at the raw, unedited, uninterrupted footage of Sigourney making the shot. 24 does 26, take four B camera marks. The hell are you? But it was so amazing. Everybody was. It was almost, 
you know, impossible for the crew not to just jump out of our, you know, shoes when she did that. You know, we're like, okay, now walk out of frame and yeah. <laughs> I remember Ron Perlman, he turned. And I go, holy shit, it went in. And everybody on the set went from total elation to total panic because I broke character. I mean, I became Ron like that. And at the editing, we had the problem because we had just to cut before he turned uh, he turns the head. And it was wow. Everybody was was you know was completely blown away on, on the set because it was just impossible, and she did it. You know, this was like the greatest moment of my life, except for you know maybe my wedding day and, and when I had my daughter. But they, they, it was just one problem for me because Sigourney, of course, saw the ball and the ball went out of frame and then back in frame. And I said to Jean-Pierre, okay, what, what, what I'll do, and Sigourney was here, what I'll do is I just, you know, tweak the, uh, uh, the path of the ball, then the ball don't get out of the screen. Because it looks like, it, you know, it could have been a trick and it wasn't. I was there, she did it. She would have won the million dollars at halftime at the All-Star break. And Sigourney, they, you don't do this shot. I do it for real. I don't want any trick on it. It was like a wild thing. I don't think my feet touched the ground for about, you know, 10 days. Scorny Weaver is a stud. She practiced and she, she, she hit it. She sunk it. That was, that was a big day.